this is the way I propose because we really have to bear this in mind. If the two Kraenas are not defended, we will be significantly jeopardised. And they certainly can't be defended without our assistance in weapons and military equipment. So as I've said, Your Honour, the result of that submission by General Perisic to the SDC on the 7th of February was for President Lilich to issue the order that we have just been looking at, ordering the VJ to provide weapons and ammunition to the VRS and SVK, and also authorising General Perisic to reconcile the requests, in other words, to say whether this is justified or not, uh, as he's pleaded before the SDC on the 7th of February. The second misapprehension uh, that I'd like to address is related to the first, namely the relationship between the VJ and the MOD. In a part of its final trial brief entitled VRS knowledge, or well, sorry, VRS understanding of request process. And this is at paragraph 633 of the defence final trial brief. The defence quote General Dushan Kovacevic. General Kovacevic testified that if the VRS needed anything, the VRS would go to the RS Ministry of Defence. The RS Ministry of Defence would go in turn to either its own special purpose abilities or to the FRI MOD. Not to the VJ, but to the FRI MOD to source what it had been requested by the VRS. If the FRI MOD were not able to provide what the RS MOD was seeking, then President Karadzic would go to see Slobodan Milosevic and see if Mr Milosevic could find a way to provide what was needed. Now what is patently missing from uh, that description of the process is what actually occurred. Now, General Kovacevic was the Minister of Defence uh, for the Republic of Srpska at that time. And what he was testifying about was the role that the Fry MOD had in securing material for the needs of the VRS. But what his testimony fails to take into account is the reality of the situation, which was that in furtherance to the order that we've seen from President Lilich, General Perisic established a system whereby requests would go direct from the main staff of the VRS to the general staff of the VJ. We've had plenty of testimony on that during this trial and there are plenty of exhibits showing that process in operation. Mladic or somebody else from the VRS main staff would send a request to the general staff. It would find its way to General Perisic he would direct that the request be forwarded to the appropriate logistics organ for an opinion as to whether or not the material could be supplied. If the material could be supplied, then General Perisic or his cabinet would issue an order to that effect and the material would be supplied. This was a process that bypassed both the RSMOD and the FRI MOD. It was nothing to do with the MOD. This was Perisic carrying out Lilich's order, the order obtained at his request, to directly supply VJ to VRS, the 30th Personnel Centre, with weapons and ammunition, to regulate the requests and to provide an opinion based on the ability of the VJ to meet those requests and to provide that assistance to the extent that the VJ could meet those requests. The next apprehension, misapprehension, I'd like to discuss, Your Honours, is a submission by the defence that it was the 
Serbian MOOP who controlled official border crossings. And that uh, submission is made at paragraph 681 of the defence final trial brief. First of all, the prosecution accepts that official border crossings were under the control of the police, the Serbian MOOP. Uh, however, official border crossings were only part of the picture and the reality was that unofficial border crossings played as much a role, if not more, in the provision of assistance than anything else. First of all, it was General Vucic, the VJ General Staff Assistant Chief of Relations with Foreign Armies, who explained the difference between <coughs> MOOC control of border crossings and VJ control of the border. And if we could move to his testimony. Uh, he was asked by my learned friends for the defence, why was the VJ not in a position to control in full the so-called border? And his answer was, if we are talking about borders in the standard meaning of the term, the military never controlled the entire borderline, only the stretches between official border crossings. At the official border crossings, uh, there was the police as well as customs. And this becomes important testimony when one considers, Your Honours, that the official border crossings were bypassed. And they were bypassed deliberately, which means that supplies were going through the parts of the border that were controlled by the VJ. Could we go so into close? Yeah. I'm sorry, Your Honour. Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand what you are saying, uh, read with what has been said here, and I just want you to clarify this. If we are talking about borders in the standard meaning of the term, mm -hmm. the military never controlled the entire borderline, only the stretches between official border crossings. What, what does that last phrase mean? The, the, the VJ controlled the entire border line, was responsible for controlling the entire border line, Your Honour, with the exception well, of official well, crossing points. Oh, okay. So the official crossing points would have police and customs, but the rest of the border was the responsibility of the VJ. And as I've said, Your Honour, this becomes important when one considers uh, that effectively unofficial crossings were used. And if we could move very briefly, Your Honours, into closed session. Thank you, Chamber. Please move into private session. We're back in open session, Your Honours. Thank you so much. Yes, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Your Honour. Uh, further support for that proposition comes from General Dukic, Your Honour, who was the VRS Deputy Chief for Logistics. Uh, and I'm reading now from his 92 quartier statement. I know that the transfer of the weapons and ammunition was carried out secretly uh, in the area stated uh, by civilian trucks avoiding border crossings where there were unperformed observers. So while it might be true, Your Honours, that the uh, Serbian MOOP and customs and unperformed observers uh, were present at official border crossings, uh, there are, as you can see, self-evident reasons why unofficial crossings were used to transport this material. The next matter that I'd like to briefly address, Your Honour, uh, is again similarly related to this concept of VJ versus MOD. At paragraph 718 of the defence final trial brief, 
the defence accept that there is evidence showing that certain entities provided material to the VRS, and they list three. They list Kragu Yevats, they list the depot at Mersach, and they list Krushik Factory in Valjeva. They assert in that paragraph that these three entities, however, were not VJ entities or subordinated to the VJ. Uh, however, in this respect, they are wrong. Uh, both Kragu Yevats and Mersach uh, were, in fact, VJ entities. Uh, and uh, concession, more appropriately, is that these two, as VJ entities, sent weapons and ammunition to the VRS and that Krushik, as an MOD entity, sent material. The authority for that proposition, first of all, comes from General Kodzipelic, who was the, in charge of Kragu Yevats. Uh, he was the VJ General Staff Chief of Technical Administration, and he was asked specifically about the status or the subordination of the Kragu Yevats Technical Institute. If we can move to that testimony, please. Starting about halfway down uh, that quote, Your Honours, what I'd like you to do, if you could, is I'd like you to explain to us the technical institutes and how the military technical institutes, and specifically the military technical institutes with regard to repair, fit into your duties, if you could. And his answer, I can only speak of the technical and maintenance institutes that were under me, in other words, as Chief of the Technical Administration of the VJ General Staff. It was the Institute in Kragujevac and Chachak. MP14 testified about the subordination of the Mersach military depot to Kragujevac thereby establishing its status as a VJ military unit. In discussing a particular materialist, Your Honour, he said... Earlier, earlier you asked to go into private session and you discussed this witness. Do you, are you happy to do, con to do so now in open session? Yes, this was testimony given in open session, Your Honour. Thank you. In discussing a particular material list, MP14 stated that Kragu Yevats is the sender and the place, Mersach, that's probably a depot somewhere in Serbia. I wouldn't know where it was. And it belonged to the main military post in Kragu Yevats. Uh, just, as, just as the 27th base was my main military post and Kragu Yevats was subordinate to it, so the main command would be at Kragujevac and the depot would be in Mersach, placing both of those, Your Honour, under the authority of the VJ General Staff Chief of Technical Administration, General Kodjapalic. Further support for the status of Mersach comes from a document, several, but this is one of several which will suit our purposes. Uh, this is an order issued by the First Army of the VJ in July 1994. Further to a decision, so this is, first of all, Your Honours, it's important to note that this is a VJ order. Excuse me. Further to decision confidential number 85-35, dated 21 April 1994, issued by the Chief of the General Staff of the VJ, issued to the 30th Personnel Centre the following types and quantities of ammunition from here and below listed military posts. And amongst those listed, we have military post 5292 Mersach, 7.9 millimetre bullet, 1 million rounds, 7.62 millimetre bullet, 750,000 rounds. So from those uh, pieces of evidence, Your Honour, you have uh, established, as well as from others, 
but the defence concession that these entities provided material to the VRS um, is a concession that these VJ installations provided the material. The final matter I'd like to very briefly address, Your Honours, is one that was the subject of much discussion uh, by my learned friends in the Defence Final Trial Brief, and that is General Mladic's report to the 50th Bosnian Serb Assembly Session uh, on the 15th of April 1995. And this is discussed from paragraph 732 onwards in the Defence Final Trial Brief. At this Bosnian Serb Assembly session, General Mladic was invited to address the delegates on the state of the war, uh, the state of the VRS, its activities, its combat readiness and its needs. And during the course of that address, he described material that had been used, that had been consumed by the VRS from the very beginning of the war through until December 1994 and the various sources of that material. For example, he stated that the VJ had provided 47.2% of infantry ammunition consumed by the VRS in that period. And he gave other percentages of, of, of other items. However, Your Honours, it's important to not look at this document in isolation, and this is a theme that has been picked up by others who have gone before me. First of all, well, not least of all, the time period referred to by General Mladic was from the beginning of the war in Bosnia through to December 1994. In other words, it includes uh, a large period that preceded General Perisic as Chief of the General Staff of the VJ. And significantly in that period, uh, as we've seen from documents referred to by uh, Mr. Harmon, uh, it was during this early period that the VRS had the benefit of being able to rely very heavily on reserves left behind by the retreating JNA. The point is, the document is useful only when it is placed up against the entire body of evidence uh, that Your Honours have in relation to logistics. As I've said, that discussion appears uh, more fully in our final trial brief. I can do no more at this point, Your Honours, than to simply state that we rely on the entire body of evidence and for the conclusions that Your Honours feel that you can draw from that entire body of evidence. But our position is that from the testimony and from the exhibits, it was clearly articulated for our policy to assist the RS and the RSK. It was fire policy for the VJ to directly supply the VRS and the SVK with weapons, ammunition and other logistics assistance. Perisic was authorised to make sure that happened. He set in place procedures necessary to make that happen. He continued to involve himself in those procedures throughout his tenure. Throughout this time, the VJ did supply material to the VRS on repeated occasions. And that throughout the indictment period, when the VRS had no more JNA reserves left, this assistance was crucial and substantial. Uh, Your Honours, those are my submissions. Unless you have any questions, I will leave it at that point. Thank you very much, Mr. Thomas. Yes, Mr. Harmon. Who's next?
Governor, the next, next submissions will be made by me. I see that we only have five minutes left for today's session. I'm happy to begin, however, clearly, with as fast as I talk, I still can't get my entire submission done in the five minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Madam Carter. Uh, I understand that's to be saying we should take an early break. I'm at the leave of uh, the discretion of your honors. I'm happy to begin, or I'm happy to begin in the morning, whichever you would prefer. Okay, we'll take a break then and come back tomorrow. Court adjourned to tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, same court.